Engagers, this is Professor Game, where we interview successful practitioners of games, gamification and game thinking, who bring us the best of their experiences to get ideas, insights and inspiration to help us in the process of using games and gamification in our daily lives, for example, to learn what we are teaching. And I am Rob Alvarez. I work at Iron Hack, teach at IE Business School University and so much more and host this podcast. If you have an extra second, please go ahead and subscribe for free to our email list at professorgame.com slash subscribe. Engagers, welcome back to another episode of the Professor Game podcast. We have Ron with us today, but before we take off, Ron, are you prepared to engage? Pumped to engage, definitely ready. <laughs> Let's do this because Ron Kerbs, who is with us today, is the founder and CEO of Kitas. Is that, is that right? Kitas. Kitas which is a company that creates AI-based solutions that help parents to protect their kids from bullying, scams, and online predators in more than 200 online multiplayer games like Fortnite, Roblox, and Call of Duty. He holds an MSc in Information System Engineering and Machine Learning from Technion, Israel Institute of Technology, and an MBA of the Wharton School of Business, and an MA in Global Studies from the Lauder Institute of the University of Pennsylvania. Before starting Kias, he was an early-stage venture capital investor. And prior to that, he was an R&D manager who led teams to create big data and machine learning solutions for national security. And he is excited about gaming and making gaming a safe experience for kids and families. So engagers, as you can realize, Ron has a lot of very interesting stuff going on, very much in sort of our area of the kinds of things that we want to discuss always in the podcast. But it might also be a little bit different from what you're typically expecting because of his area of expertise so, Ron, are, are we missing anything from that intro? Uh, thank you very much for that, Rob. Super excited to be here and you know, talk a little bit about gaming and safety in gaming. Amazing. Thank you so much for being here. So, Ron, the first thing we always want to know about our guests is what does a regular day with you or a life in the day of, of Ron look like or, or a week, whatever you want to go for? We sort of want to be there and, and feel what it is like to be you for a while. Yeah, so I'm, I'm a big believer in in waking up early so wake up pretty early around 5 30 to 6 hit the gym for an hour and then that's for you know for the body and then spend an hour with my son that's more for the soul i would say and, and then i start my day and, and my and my day is pretty diverse i'm working on some r d stuff with, with our engineers i'm working on some marketing stuff with the marketing team partnership stuff talking with some of our investors so really like the fact that, you know, you can jump from talking about really technical stuff to talking to marketing, to talking to partnership. And um, it's very diverse. And, and I like my day, um, you know, changing and, and, and jumping from topic to topic. Some people don't like it. I actually really enjoy it. That sounds absolutely amazing. Going from one thing to another. Many things going on and keep it exciting as well. Keep it with a variety. That That sounds very neat. I mean, again, as you were saying, not everybody likes it that way. Some people like a little bit more of perhaps routine or, you know, sticking to a task to be able to focus and concentrate more on that. But, you know, every life hopefully is designed for the person <laughs> that is living that life and you're designing your own life the way you want to live it. So, Ron, thank you very much for that. But now we, we actually want to get into a story, Ron. We want to be there with you in a story and probably it's going to have to do with what you do at Kitas that company because we we want to be there with from a time of, of a challenge you know one of those times when things were you were trying to do something in this world of of gaming and to improve the lives and the privacy of kids and their parents and their families of course and things didn't go right of course we know now that you are doing amazing things and that you probably pivoted from that or, or made a, a twist and and did the right thing in the end and managed to get out of it but we want to be there with you and take those lessons that you took away from such an experience Wow, yeah, definitely. You said pivoted and definitely pivoted is the right word. So while I was doing my MBA, I actually came across an article in, in the local Philadelphia newspaper about a, a girl who was sexually assaulted by someone she met online. I, I read about it and I said, wow, we have to solve this this topic. How come no one solved it so far? And instead of doing the thing that, you know, business school and entrepreneurship classes tell you to do, hmm. uh, you start talking with users and understanding the problem. I said, like, I, I ju just jumped into creating the technology. So I called one of my friends and said, OK, let's create something that can detect those kind of scenarios. So we created an Android app that 
detect those kind of things in social media, in Snapchat, in Instagram, but we were marketing it to the US market. And a lot of the users that we were marketing it to, and the kids of the users, the parents that we were marketing it to, were actually iPhone users. So we worked so hard in cre- on creating the technology, on solving a problem that you know we actually didn't solve it to, to the market that we're aiming for. And so that taught, taught us actually a lot. It taught us about talking to users. It taught us about getting feedback from the people, the customers that were trying to solve the problem. So today, before I'm trying to write even one line of code of even one of our engineers, we make sure that we rely on customer feedback. We you know, do a lot of user interviews, a lot of surveys, and, and then that's, you know, basic, you know, a lot of people know that, but that was a big mistake that we we had a, a, at least at the beginning. And I think we wasted like a few good months on creating a technology for huh. something that would not be used. And then once we start getting, you know, feedback from parents and feedback from kids, uh, we understood that actually the biggest threat for kids is actually in gaming. We, we pivoted. So we, we created solutions for online gaming. We switched from social media to gaming. Uh, we switched from Android to, to PC games and to console games. And we, we understood that, you know, a lot of those kids today are talking with strangers online. They come across scams. They come across online predators. It's probably the first time that they came across those things. And it's actually estimated that 60% of the kids in the U.S. Uh, will come across those things before they, they, they become 18 years old. So majority of the kids who play come across those things. And, and we wanted to solve it for them. We wanted to create something that is safe for, for parents and safe for kids and, and make sure that kids can enjoy gaming online gaming and online multiplayer gaming and parents can be sure that their kids are safe while they play those things so i would say that the failure was not talking <laughs> with users and now we're relying on a lot of user feedback and a lot of data and surveys before we you know even write a right line one line of code that sounds amazing and i mean you, you were saying that you know it, oh it sounds basic and it sounds like something that many people know and so, so two things, of course, when you know it, you know it, it's not going to happen to you again, probably, or, or it's going to happen in a different level at a different way. And it's something that many people talk about. But until it happens actually to you, you might, you might sort of consciously know what's there. But then subconsciously, you kind of say like, like your subconscious is as well, like fighting you and like, no, oh, you, you know what you're doing. Um, your company is so good. And the things that you're doing, you already know. So actually getting yourself to be humble enough in a way of saying like, you know, you, you only know what you know. And what you don't know, you have to go and figure it out. And that means going out to users, going out to doing that research is something that is crucial. It's fundamental in all the stages of entrepreneurship. And definitely whenever you are creating a game, whenever you're creating a gamified solution, it is crucial as well. And we've discussed this at a certain point in many interviews before, but it is always a point that I love to stress, especially to make sure that we understand that we are creating something for some people. And typically those people are not us. So whatever is in their heads is not in our heads and we have to go and find that out. So Ron, thank you very much for sharing. For sure, for sure. And also, I also have to, to, to mention that, you know, sometimes, sometimes you were, you know, stuck in a bias sample. So, you know, all of our friends use a specific technology or a specific game, yep. but we fail to understand that, you know, our friends group, our circle is not necessarily representing all gamers out there, all of our audience out there. So it's very important to not just ask your friends, ask your family mm-hmm. members, ask your close circle, make sure that you have some a representative sample of the target audience, the people that you're trying to solve the problem for. Absolutely. And asking friends and family is not a bad thing. It's just realizing that they're your friends and family. Feedback is going to be a little bit different as well. And sometimes your friend or fa- and family are part of the target audience, but pretty often and actually most often they're not. <laughs> so, so make yeah, sure you also sure. get some other feedback as well. Thank you very much for all those insights, Ron. And actually, let, let's spin that around. Like, can you tell us a story? Maybe it could be the success story of, of how Kitas came to be after, you know, sort of this this pivot. Because we want to be there with you and, and perhaps assign some, some of those success factors and we want to sort of learn from that experience as well. Yeah, so I think one of the happiest days that we, we had at Kitas was the first time that we actually detected something dangerous for kids. So we had a child who shared his parents' credit card information and we alerted parents about it. We, we detected it, someone... Uh, convince the child to give him 
the, the credit card information and we, we detected it. And while it was, you know, it was an alarming, we had to send message to the parents to alert them about them, to let them know that their credit card details have been exposed. While it was very alarming for them, um, it was, you know, weird situation because on one hand, it's, it's very alarming. It's a sad moment for them, but it, it was very happy moments for us in the sense that we were able to, to detect it and we were able to protect this child and family from those kind of things. And, and since then, we had a lot of cases of kids sharing private information of their parents, anything from credit card numbers, from social security numbers. For, for those of you who are not based in the U.S., social security numbers are critical and very private in the U.S. And, and sometimes kids are convinced to share it because, you know, someone is offering them V-Bucks, which is the Fortnite money or Robux or something like that. <laughs> and they're young and, it's, and they're naive and they... They've never seen that before, and they assume that you know people, other people have good intention, and that's what we're trying to to help them solve. So while they're in the young ages of, uh, usually it's eight to thirteen, and they're still naive, they still don't have enough of experience to understand when they're talking with an online predator or, the, or a scammer. Our technology alerts them and their parents about those situations, so they can solve those situations before it becomes more serious. And you know, sending a credit card number is serious, but it's not the, the most serious uh, situation that we've had. We, we had kids planning to meet strangers in real life, people that they've never met uh, in their lifetime just because they talked for once on, on Fortnite. So those, those are some of the aspects of our technology and what we try to solve for kids. And that's, that, that's excessive. As every time we, we find those kind of cases and we alert parents, we know that it's a very tough moment for them. No one wants to get this message from from us or from anyone else about their kids, but it's a very happy moment for us knowing that we save someone out there. So that's what we, you know, that's what we wake up in the morning for. Sounds like an amazing mission, an amazing statement of, of what you guys are doing and achieving. Um, of course, and again, protecting privacy among, amongst others. I, I don't want any sort of personal or, or, or super specific details. But if you can tell us maybe a, one of the stories or, or something that, you know, one of those times where, you know, this actually happened or, or where that inspiration for you came from. I, I don't know. I, I really enjoy if, if we could have a, a little bit like deep dive a little bit, a little bit further if possible. Yeah. So, of course, I would not share certain names of, of kids and parents, but I would share, share the, you know, the case in, in a general sense. And I talked with the mom of the child. So. I feel free to share it. So we, we had one child who, who was actually extorted by, by his classmates from, from school. They wanted him to send them a Robux, the money of uh, Roblox. And they sent him to, you know, to hit him in school, to do a bunch of stuff that were very frightening for him. And we were able to, you know, solve the situation for the parents. And they, they noticed that something is weird, but they weren't sure why, what is happening because they knew that he was talking with his classmates. He was talking with people he knew from before. So they weren't concerned because they said, okay, that, that's not like an only predator. It's not a scammer. We know those kids. We know those the parents of those kids. But actually, there was some dynamic between the kids. And, and he was actually pushed to, to send them money. And, and they threatened him that if he, he wouldn't send the money, they would just hit him in school. So th th that's one of the situations that we detected and you know, since then he stopped. You know, stopped playing with those kids, and but they, he still has to see them every day at school. But at least he knows that you know the situation was solved. He has he's you know playing with some other kids, and while you know it's a weird dynamic because both sides are kids, we we were happy that we were able to solve it for him at least. Absolutely, and and it, it was definitely a case of you know again, it doesn't have to be in. A person who is older than you for for that to be a, a a bad situation that they're putting you in, they were profiting in 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 a way you know in a weird way to, to to use the word, but they were profiting from his from his or her innocence, right? That, that that's not the right thing to do, and if you were able to detect that, you know, alert the parents and and you know prevent the situation from happening, which basically is is the best thing you can do. Like usually, you can you hear this about in medical stuff, you hear this about about this in in, in many different settings. Prevention is the key to almost <laughs> most of the problems. Once the problem is there, it's harder always to solve. If you can prevent it, it's always easier to, to get there. And, it, and it's, you know, it, it's like police yeah. action as well, right? You, you don't want the, the ideal world. You don't need the police, right? Because it, the, the actions are not happening. The bad things are not happening. So <laughs> amazing, <laughs> basically. Thanks for sharing that. For sure. 
Thanks for that, for, for sure. And, and I have to say that, you know, with kids, it's actually even harder because, you know, with, with adults, sometimes I understand that they need to share it with someone. And, and with kids, they sometimes they're like they're embarrassed. They're, they're, they're embarrassed to admit mm. that they're being bullied by their, their classmates. Sometimes they think that they are the problem. They're blaming themselves. So even though in most cases it's not their problem, it, it is their problem, but it's not their fault. They are too embarrassed to to admit it, and when they when they don't admit it, no grown up, their parents of course cannot help them because they don't know about the situation. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's 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 key to. I mean, it's the only way for the parents to get to know if the kid tells them. But now you have a system that helps, <laughs> basically helps the parents know as well, right? Yeah, for sure. And and our goal our goal is not you know to be a spy. Our goal is to to make sure that kids and parents have an honest discussion. So parents get, you know, a report and alert about something. We don't share all of the details. We tell them, uh, yeah, it happened in specific game at this time, what happened, but they don't get full transcripts and they don't get voice recording or anything like that. Uh, but we also offer them some ways to deal with the situation. So basically they get recommendations from psychologists that work with us on how to talk about those topics with their kids. Do they need to inform law enforcement do they need to you know talk with their kids maybe they need to talk with the parents of the other kids hmm. because one of the things that you know most parents do is tell the kids you're not playing this game anymore and but actually that's in most cases that's actually the worst thing that you can do in the situation gaming today for those kids is actually their source of social aspect of, of their life so a lot of those kids spend a lot of time to socialize with their classmates when you say to one of those kids that you cannot play anymore, you're basically preventing them from hanging out with their friends. So in most cases, I have to admit, preventing them from playing the game is not the right answer. And that's why one of the things that we're trying to do is recommending them how to solve the, the situation. We do believe that you know, gaming has a lot of positive aspects and you know it's great for kids. It's great for the development. It's great for learning new skills, for socializing with other people online, uh, as long as you do it in a safe way. And our goal is to make sure that we are allowing kids to do it in a safe way and mitigating the risk for them. And and, and an amazing thing that I, that I find about what, what you're you're commenting, and and I'm assuming this uh, from your solution. I don't know if it's been around for for long enough, but at least you 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 probably have an hypothesis, right? That you know once these kids learn how to play in a, in a safe environment this is something that sort of splashes over to what happens after right they're, they're now they're 18 you don't share that with their parents i don't know if, if they can still be in the app and they get their own notifications I, like I, I i'm not going to get into the details of that necessarily but it's more of the mindset that they have now like one of the biggest threats i've been told at least i'm not an expert in cybersecurity in any way is usually us as humans, right? We are the biggest hole in cybersecurity. The only way sometimes to penetrate a system is because of the errors or the mistakes that we commit as humans, right? So now at least a part of that and, and not only cybersecurity, but scams and, and many other things that can come online, these kids who have gone through this, at least they it seems like they will be more ready to be safe as well in other settings in the future. Does that, does that, does that make sense, Ron? Do you have any anything else to, to add on that or am I off the, yeah. off the bucket? Yeah, Rob, it makes a lot of sense. And and exactly what you, you talked about. So, you know, the professional term for, for that is called social engineering. So tricking mm. someone to, to do something that, you know, they don't plan to do. So tricking someone to share their credit card number or their parents' credit card number or a social security number or maybe something like very meaningless. It seems at least at the beginning meaningless like parents' work schedule. But then this mm. online predator should know, okay, when can I come to this child home or, or where can I, when I can? So social engineering is, is huge in, in the world of cybersecurity, phishing attacks and, and some other stuff. And, and yeah, by educating those kids how to deal with those situations, what to look for in the early days, we're basically creating them and preparing them uh, for the life, you know, as gamers as and, and internet users in the, in the future. We don't plan them to use it when they're 18 or even when they're 16. We plan them to use it when they're in the critical stage of starting to play online multiplayer games and then learning what should be done and what shouldn't be done and then, you know, using it without it. So you can imagine it as a, as a car. So car has great benefits, but it also, if you don't know how to use it, could be a big risk. So 
no one would imagine letting a child drive a car without supervision, without training them how to use the car. And that's exactly what we provide. We provide the training, the balance between using a car or using a, a game, at least at the beginning. And then when the child is ready, parents are more than welcome to delete our software and let them play without uh, the guidance of Kidas and, and without the alerts that we provide. Yeah, you're essentially, I, I, I've been hearing, I've, we're having a daughter soon. I, I mentioned this a, a few weeks ago in the podcast. And one of the objectives that some people see in, in parenting, and I, I tend to agree, is that you're helping them face the world when you are not around. Like your objective as a parent should, or I would say should be, right, to enable them and empower them to live in a world where you know, you're, you're, you're not there to take care of, of what they can, they're able to do, right? So growing into adulthood is being able to do those things all by yourself, right? So you're, you're sort of helping parents do, do some of the parenting, right? They're, you're helping them raise capable kids in this specific area so they know how to face these dangers that, that are existing in the internet. And many of us did, did not grow up with these, with these kinds of things. And we had to learn either the hard way or through practice or through listening to other things. Or maybe some, some, some of us get to a certain age and we, we don't know about these things. And that's how online scammers get a lot of people out on the internet. So thanks again, Ron, for those insights and, and, and even for the software that you guys are creating. Just a quick break before we continue with this episode. If you've been enjoying this podcast, I would really appreciate if you share it with your friends and family and on social media. On Twitter and Instagram, it's at Rob Alvarez B and the hashtag Professor Game, all one word. And in Facebook, you can find the Professor Game page. Thanks in advance for your engagement. And Ron, you are in the online safety world, especially for gamers. Besides, of course, using Kitas, are there any sort of key recommendation or a you know something that if you if you if you tell them like oh do this kind of thing again next to Kitas, or even if you don't have Kitas, would benefit their 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 general you know safety in, in online gaming is, do you have a, such a recommendation so to speak yeah i think the best recommendation that i can give is to avoid the snowball and i'll i'll, I'll explain in a second what i mean with the snowball so most attacks by online predators by scammers by bullies start with something really trivial they ask you to share something about yourself. And once you start sharing about something about yourself, they use it in order to extort you and get more information. And they threaten you. If you don't do what we tell you to do, we're going to you know, publish this information, this private information. So the best thing that I can you know, give grown-ups out there is you know, not, not to collaborate with, with those scammers. Even if you shared something, don't think that if you're going to share more information or if you're going to do anything that they told you to do, they're going to stop. It's only going to make, make the situation worse. In, in, in this case, you know, it's better to, to contact the game company. You can report certain users or in even serious cases, say you, you can talk with law enforcement. If I, I have to recommend kids how to, to behave in this situation, once you share them, and sometimes it, it's inevitable, and sometimes you share information without knowing or without noticing. Once you notice that you shared something that you probably shouldn't have shared, talk with your parents about it. Like, talk with a, a grown up about the situation. Don't be tempted to be too embarrassed to talk with someone about the situation because it's only going to make the situation way worse for you. Very good recommendation. <laughs> don't, don't get into the snowball because it only gets bigger. The faster you stop the, the snowball, the easier it is going to be. So thank you very much for that recommendation. And Ron, you mentioned that you've heard a, a, a few interviews as well of the podcast. You know, now have heard some of the questions or at least the twist that we gave them so that, you know, you could provide the value that you have from your knowledge. Is there somebody that you would be curious to listen to, like answering these questions, sort of a, a future guest for, for this podcast, for Professor Game? Yeah, I, I think like one of one of the people that I would invite is actually a person who helped me a lot throughout our journey is actually an investor in, in, in Kidas. And his name is Rob Seaver. He actually started a company called Vivox. At some point he sold it to Unity. And he's basically one of the first people to believe in online gaming and multiplayer voice chats. So Vivox his company created the way for players to communicate with other players using voice chat. And he's been super helpful and super knowledgeable about gaming and, and most of all about gaming and interaction between gamers. What does it mean to interact? How to do it in a high scale well way? And what is 
online gaming and communication in game, gaming and how should it look like. So I would be super interested to hear Rob talking about those kind of things. Um, and he's been, I can say, a mentor for, for me in teaching me about online gaming and online interactions within gaming. Amazing. Thank you so much. That's a very interesting, sounds like a very interesting character to have on the podcast for sure. And Ron, talking about recommendations, perhaps this, this would be more in your, in, in your sort of in your ball, ballpark. Is there any book that you would recommend to the engagers, perhaps to know more about, you know, online gaming and security and safety or cybersecurity? I don't know, whatever you want to recommend to this, to this audience. Yeah, one of the things that I would recommend is actually not related to gaming, not related to cybersecurity, but is relating to almost anything. So one book that I really liked and read recently uh, is called Influence. I think that the author is Robert Caldini, if I'm not yes. mistaken. And I think they, they teach it in, in business school. You probably know it or heard about it before, but basically gaming is all about group and group dynamics and you know the book teaches you how to influence people in, in group dynamic how to use some psychology to to change people's mind and it's relevant for everything for convincing people for building product for building communities you talk in, in your podcast a lot about gamification and you know affecting people and training people huh, and yeah when you know those psychological effects uh, it's way easier to to convince people to use your solution and also to teach them how to, to perform the job because, you know, there are certain things that we're all biased towards and, you know, that we're all acting according to. And once you know those things, it's much easier and, you know, things start to click. And so that's one book that really affected me and, and I really recommend it. I recommend the engagers to read it. Amazing. Yes, an amazing book. I definitely have read it. I actually have it in my my library right behind me. I couldn't find uh, at the time I was looking for it. I haven't looked for it again. A new one. So I had to purchase a, a used book and it was it was in perfect condition, so I can't complain. But it was a curious thing that they that at least at the time they didn't have any new editions. Very, very good book. I honestly recommend it as well as Ron. So talking about recommendations, we've talked about, you know, other people to interview. We've talked about books to read that could be interesting for the audience. But what would you say in your case, for you, what is your superpower? That thing that you do at least better than most other people? Yeah, it's hard to say, but if I had to choose one, I would probably say that I'm, you know, a connector of topics. So I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm the best programmer. I wouldn't say that, you know, I'm the best marketer. I wouldn't say that I'm the best gamer. But since I have a little <laughs> bit of understanding in all of those fields, and I think my superpower is to be connector, to absorb a little bit of information from gaming and from the technology side, from the machine learning side, and from the marketing, and to combine it to something pretty new that, you know, someone who's just a gamer or someone who's just a developer uh, wouldn't think about. So I think it's, that's, if I had to choose, I, I would probably say that that's my superpower. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you for that, Ron. And this one is, is, is a question that I, I think it's also going to be difficult for you because it is all about understanding what would you say is your favorite game? Wow, that's a big one. So <laughs> I, I grew up I grew up playing a lot of games. Like I grew up playing uh, console games. I think I had I received my first PlayStation growing up. I think the first game that I played on PlayStation was NBA ninety eight, I think it was back then, or maybe ninety five, I'm not sure. So I played a lot of sports game. I played a lot of FIFA. There was a camp, you know, some of my friends were playing FIFA. Some of them were playing Pro Evolution Soccer. And, but I, I definitely... Massive divide, I, I no? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, massive divide. And, you know, the controller buttons are a little bit different between the games. So, and I played a lot of other games like uh, GTA, Grand Theft Auto, and strategy games like Age of Empires. But if I had to choose one, I would probably go with FIFA. I think that's, you know, a game that you can play by yourself. You can play with family. You can play with friends. Very social game that you can play with others, others online, but also others that, you know, sit right next to you. So yeah. I would go with FIFA, you know, the traditional FIFA. Amazing. Amazing. Very good game. I've played, I've had my ups and downs with FIFA, like times where I play it like all day, like everything I play is FIFA. Other times when I forget about it. Right now, I haven't played it in a while. <laughs> um, I think the latest one I have is like 2017 or 18, something like that. I haven't played it in a while, but I know I pick it up and I always enjoy it. 
Yeah, I have to admit that I haven't played it in the last few months as well. But, you know, every time my brother visits or one of my, you know, high school friends uh, is visiting, that's, you know, a good time to, to catch up and play some FIFA. <laughs> it's always a good time to play some FIFA together, for sure. <laughs> that's one of the things I enjoy the most, to be honest, being able to play with other people in, in, in FIFA in the same room, especially. Like, the online gaming has a lot of benefits, and, you know, I, I don't have to convince you <laughs> about it. But, you know, sitting in the same room is something that I do miss from back in the day when it was not possible <laughs> to to play online and you only could play in the same room if we wanted to play with more people. So that, that was something I enjoyed quite a bit. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, Ron, thank you. For sure. Thank you so much for, for being in this interview with us today. We've gathered so many insights, so much ideas, so much knowledge from what you've had. Before, of course, we, we move on, we, we take off to, to whatever other activities everybody has in their lives. We definitely want to know if you have any final words. Let us know where we can find more about you, about the company, and then we'll say that it's game over. Yeah, sadly saying that it's game over. But yeah, I would encourage all the parents out there to, to let their, their kids play online games, interact with other players. Gaming is fun. It's a social activity. It's definitely good, but do it in a safe way and make sure that you know what your kids are playing and who with whom are they playing. And if you want to learn about me, um, you can find me on, on Twitter or LinkedIn, both of them, Ron Kurtz, or you can find out more about our product at getkidas.com. Amazing. Thank you so much once again, Ron, for sharing all what you have shared. But engagers, as you very well know, by now it is time to say that it's game over. Hey, Engagers, thank you for listening to the Professor Game Podcast. And if you want more interviews and episodes in general, but with interviews, guests like the amazing Ron Kerbs, please go to professorgame.com slash subscribe and get started on our email list for free. That way we can interact, you can reply to my emails, we can be in direct contact in that sense, and you will be the first to know of any opportunities that Professor Game might have for you, like the one that we discussed in the anniversary episode. Yes, the engagers who were on the email got that very soon as well. And, well, at least sooner than the rest. <laughs> and got that through email, so you don't have to type it up. You have it right there. And, of course, now you can be in contact with us on Professor Game. And remember, before you go on to your next mission, please remember to subscribe or follow, whatever that looks like, because it's for free on your favorite podcast app. And listen to the next episode of Professor Game. See you there. <laughs>